This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for June 17, 2023, man in custody for breaches of the Firearms Act. The Clarendon police have taken a man into custody who they say is wanted in another jurisdiction for breaches of the Firearms Act during a stop-and-search operation in the parish earlier yesterday. Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations in Era 3, Kerry Duncan, said that the person was traveling in a private motor vehicle with a child and a female. We have also apprehended some persons who we believe are persons of interest for other crimes who will be interviewed, DSP Duncan said. He added that Friday's operation was a collaboration with the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Jamaica Defense Force, the Narcotics and the K-9 Unit under Operation Reclaim, which is a method being used to cauterize crime in Clarendon, Manchester and St. Elizabeth, with a focus on Clarendon on Friday. In the meantime, DSP Duncan is asking motorists to be patient when they encounter such activities. We understand that motorists will be late, but we do this with their best interest at heart, and it is about safety and the security of the space, he said. Former policeman who allegedly failed to report a crime remanded. Former police constable Omar Edwards, who allegedly failed to report the fatal shooting of a woman in his presence, has been remanded. When Edwards, 43, appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday, Senior Parish Court Judge Desiree Elaine was told that the case file was incomplete. He was ordered to return to court on July 7. It is alleged that about 8.30 p.m. on May 18, Edwards picked up Rosa Young Hogg, a 33-year-old security guard of Marleymount Old Harbor St. Catherine from work. While traveling with Young Hogg from Portmore to Spanish Town, explosions were reportedly heard and it was discovered that the security guard was shot and injured. Investigators say that Edwards took her to the hospital without reporting the incident to the police. She was admitted and died from her injuries two days later. The matter was reported after relatives became suspicious. Edwards was later held by the police and charged with misprison of a felony. Alleged car thief killed by cops A confrontation between alleged car thieves and the police officers has resulted in the fatal shooting of one of the men in St. Andrew on Friday night. The news understands that the incident occurred around 7 p.m. on Burlington Avenue in the parish. A police source said that the police were alerted to the attempted motor vehicle robbery and responded. However, the incident quickly escalated when one man was shot and killed while the others made a good their escape. The police recovered the stolen motor car on Burlington Avenue. The identity of the deceased man or the number of persons who attempted to rob the vehicle was not revealed. Man who assaults and threatens to murder woman fined. Jachin Green was fortunate to avoid jail time and instead received a monetary penalty for assaulting a woman, uttering death threats to her and damaging her motor car. The sentence was handed down by presiding judge Sasha Marie Smith Ashley in the St. James Parish Court on Friday. Green was charged with unlawful wounding, assault occasion in bodily harm, and the malicious destruction of property. In an earlier court appearance, Green told Smith Ashley that he was in a relationship with a complainant. She refuted the allegations and added that whenever he sees her, he attacks and threatens to kill her. In passing sentence on Friday, Smith Ashley ordered Green to pay a fine of $50,000 or 30 days in jail on the assault charge and $30,000 or 30 days in jail for malicious destruction. No evidence was offered against him on the unlawful wounding charge following mediation. The incident occurred on Jimmy Cliff Boulevard around 7.30 p.m. on February 28. According to court documents, at that time, the woman heard a banging on her car and the saw Green, who reached through the window and punched her on the right side of her head while threatening to murder her. He then threw an object in her windscreen. As she drove away, she noticed that damage to the right back door where the accused had been banging. The matter was reported to the police and he was arrested and charged. 
Man remanded on charges for gun and robbery at a church. A man who lured a woman and her partner to a church and robbed them of valuables at gunpoint with an accomplice yesterday pleaded guilty to gun and robbery charges in the gun court and was remanded for sentencing on July 27. The defendant, Kedin Buchanan, had contacted the female complainant via social media under the pretense that he was interested in purchasing a cellular phone. At the start of his trial yesterday, he pleaded guilty to using a firearm to commit a felony and a robbery with aggravation before Justice Yvonne Brown. Under the new firearm legislation, the offense of using a firearm to commit a felony carries a mandatory minimum of 20 years. The defendant initially pleaded not guilty to the charges, but changed his mind after hearing the evidence-in-chief of the main witness. The evidence at trial is that on November 2022, a female complainant, after being contacted by Buchanan, made arrangements for them to meet at the Central Police Station in Kingston to deliver the phone. On November 11, the female, accompanied by her spouse, went to the location. Buchanan, however, requested that they meet at a church that was in the same area, and the complainant complied. The couple, after arriving at the church, was seated in their vehicle when Buchanan entered the back and sat without invitation. The couple then told him that they did not conduct business in the car, and he replied, Everything cool, man, and attempted to hand the female an envelope, which was not taken. Shortly after, another man entered the car. The complainant at that point insisted that they did not conduct business in the car, while Buchanan continued saying, Everything cool. He then asked the complainant if they did not want to do business in the car because the second man had a gun and proceeded to tell the man to remove the gun from his belly. The man complied, but after he did so, both he and the Buchanan started screaming at the complainants to give them everything they had. Buchanan then grabbed the items including phones and the male complainant's wallet and left the car. Following the robbery, the couple reported the matter and while on their way to show the police the scene, spotted Buchanan standing on the roadway and pointed him out. The police accosted him and took him to the central police station where valuables belonging to the complainants were found in his possession. A phone was also taken from Buchanan and when the female complainant was asked to ring the cell number of the potential buyer that she had met on social media, his phone rang. He was subsequently arrested and charged. Attorney at law Paul Gentles is representing Buchanan. Senators condemn recent attacks on students. Members of the Senate on Friday condemned recent acts of violence against the students. The senators lamented the abduction and the murder of eight-year-old Daniel Rowe and the Thursday's attack on the student of Cumberland High. Government Senator Dr. Safar Longmore said that there is a need to address the mental health of students who are exposed to violence. Mental health care is on everybody's mind. And what this has brought to fore is the need, and sad to say, is the need for a mobile response unit in these circumstances. We're having too much. The demand is great, and the response needs to be urgent. And so I am making the call for this on this floor of the Senate at this time. A mobile unit that can respond to these circumstances where we can go in with the adequately trained staff to see to what needs to be done in these moments, to have the follow-up, to ensure that the ripple effect of this trauma does not hurt someone else, as it is known to do. Opposition Senator Damian Crawford said that the focus should not only be on the punishment of culprits involved in these attacks against the students, but also the prevention of the crimes through policy changes. There should be, from a policy standpoint, to protect many who don't understand the risk that they're facing. So the punishment discussion is going to come when this criminal is caught and carried before the court. I've heard for the cause of hanging and on. But the policy position, the policy changes for prevention, because I wouldn't mind if there's no punishment if there was no action. If we can prevent further cases like this by policing our schools satisfactorily, educating our communities efficiently, and also informing our parents on how to best protect their children, I believe that we will not be here so often speaking to 
the negatives of the most vulnerable, being harmed, being molested, and being killed. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.